Charlotte County, Sheriff and Punta Gorda, police absolutely need oversight, it's completely out of control here. Dog five people died in jail and a cop lets his dog maul a guy for no light on his bike and doesn't get fired then he executes a lady and still doesn't get fired and has on paid leave still. Lawmakers call for oversight. Some push for annual reports on judges' sentencing patterns. By Emily Lacaz and Josh Salmon. Florida lawmakers will push for more judicial oversight in response to a Herald Tribune investigation detailing widespread racial disparities and criminal punishments across the state. The year-long investigation, Bias on the Bench, found that black defendants receive longer sentences on average than whites for the same crimes committed under the same circumstances in the same communities. The newspaper reviewed 12 years of sentencing data, also finding that black judges sentence more fairly than their white peers, but that the state's courts lack diversity on the bench. In addition to calls for legislative measures, the investigation prompted a sentencing review in at least one judicial circuit and it will be used to train incoming judges and judicial clerks. Outside groups, including the American Civil Liberties Union of Florida and the Sentencing Project, also want Florida to pass measures to reduce racial disparity in the criminal justice system. I can't say I'm surprised, said State Senator Randolph Bracey, D. Orlando, chairman of the Senate Criminal Justice Committee, of the investigation's findings. The majority of judges do a good job of fairly sentencing, but all humans have bias. Something needs to be done to create uniformity. There should not. See Judges, A6. Judges. Continued from A1. Be this type of disparity. Bracey, who is black, wants a state agency, possibly the Florida Department of Corrections to analyze data on judicial sentencing patterns so that judges and the state can routinely review trends and make adjustments as needed to ensure racial parity. It is an idea supported by State Senator Audrey Gibson, D. Jacksonville, a longtime advocate of criminal justice reform. Gibson, who also is black, said that lawmakers are constantly scrutinized for their decisions, such as which bills they support or oppose and voters use that information at the polls. The senator said she thinks it should be no different for judges, who also occupy elected positions. It should be required that at end of the year every judge should get their sentencing data, Gibson said. Nobody is going to say they have personal biases, but if you see it in black and white, you may think differently. The state collects sentencing data from every court. But no one uses the data to review racial disparities in sentencing. Judges themselves don't know their own tendencies. The Herald Tribune found that black defendants often spend much more time behind bars, sometimes double the time of whites accused of the same crimes under identical circumstances. Blacks also get fewer chances to avoid jail or scrub away felonies. This has been happening for a very long time. And I applaud the newspaper for shining a light on it, said Wenge Newton, a black former St. Petersburg City Council member who was elected to the Florida House of Representatives as a Democrat in November. Hopefully this story will require them to do something, he said. We need all hands on deck to make it fair for everyone. The law needs to be applied evenly. Judges aren't doing this intentionally. At least one state judicial circuit already is reviewing its data in light of the newspaper's investigation. A circuit chief judge Robert Roundtree asked court administrators to examine sentencing decisions for each judge to identify possible outliers. Roundtree also said the circuit might change how it assigns cases to see if that reduces racial disparity. The circuit currently divides cases among judges based on the alphabetical order of the defendant's last names. If a defendant comes before the court multiple times, he or she will always get the same judge. By switching to a random assignment system, defendants could receive different judges in subsequent cases, lessening the possibility that a judge increases the severity of punishment with each appearance, Roundtree said. Although Roundtree said he disagreed with the Herald Tribune's methods for evaluating judges, he would have removed plea deals from the data analysis 
He said the investigation raised issues worthy of discussion. I'm glad to see there's a dialogue about it, he said. Meanwhile, the series will be incorporated into the next Florida Judicial College diversity training, which all new judges are required to attend, said 11th Circuit Judge Scott Bernstein, who teaches the course. I am going to pass out a copy of the article to every person in the room, said Bernstein, who also serves as president of the Florida Conference of Circuit Judges. Judges aren't doing this intentionally. Things like this article, and this attention, will make them more aware of this issue, and that could help to solve this portion of the problem. May to feel less than a person. Gibson, the state senator from Jacksonville, said she felt literally sick reading the series. Senator Bobby Powell, dear Vieira Beach, said he felt solidarity with black defendants. I have been stopped by police several times as a college student and as a professional. And I've been told to get out of the car, cursed at, humiliated, embarrassed, made to feel less than a person, said Powell, who sits on the Judiciary Committee and is black. As a sitting state senator, I know this is happening. I start screaming at the top of my lungs, but I feel sometimes I'm not heard. Although the legislative session does not start for more than two months, Powell said now is a good time to start thinking about bills. At the very least, he would like to see more transparency in judicial sentencing patterns. Powell said he feels good about the chances for criminal justice reform under Senate President Joe Negrin, who has a special interest in juvenile justice issues. I feel optimistic that, in this legislature, it is time for us to move the needle and turn around the structures that have been put in place, Powell said. I'm excited. Negrin reached through a spokeswoman, said he did not have a specific comment to make at this time. Senator Greg Stube, who chairs the Judiciary Committee, and whose District 23 covers Sarasota County and all of Charlotte County, declined to comment. State Senator Dennis Baxley, Arucala, said he doesn't want to blame judges or any other participant. Instead of pointing fingers, Baxley said he wants to find solutions. Baxley is familiar with the racial disparities plaguing the criminal justice system. He previously chaired the Judiciary and Criminal Justice Committees in the House and served on the Florida Council on the Social Status of Black Men and Boys. He now serves as Vice Chairman of the Senate Criminal Justice Committee. Baxley said he also supports the idea of regular judicial sentencing reports, but thinks an outside group such as the Florida Bar or Florida Tax Watch should do it. He also wants to see more emphasis put on juvenile outreach and mentoring programs to keep youth from entering the criminal justice system in the first place. Rather than looking for a victim and looking for who to blame, I'd like to hold up the real picture of what we have and say what can we do to change it? Baxley said. A lot of it is getting involved with young people earlier so they're diverted. A lot of work to do. Representative David Richardson, D. Miami Beach spent the past 18 months touring dozens of state prisons and talking to hundreds of inmates. He says he has found the same disparities, with cell after cell occupied by young black men. Richardson said he believes that more equality in sentencing could go a long way toward reducing the estimated 100,000 inmates living in a state correctional facility at an annual tab of more than $2 billion. We have a lot of work to do, he said. You can walk into a prison dorm and see far more African Americans and other minorities than the number of whites. It really does raise questions about the sentencing disparity. Richardson said he hopes there will be an appetite for change this year, especially in the wake of the Herald Tribune's investigation. Lawmakers gathered in Tallahassee this week where many had just learned their committee assignments for the upcoming session, which starts March 7. But Richardson said he fears the national debate surrounding President-elect Donald Trump, and his tough rhetoric on crime, will make any meaningful reform a difficult task. One option that Richardson pointed to is an independent review from an organization such as the Pew Center, which will go into states, review records and make recommendations. He also wants to see more oversight from the courts and the dock. It's a delicate balance, he said.
Sometimes you just have to do things because it's the right thing to do. The scale of the disparity is very disturbing. Outside groups also want Florida to pass legislation to reduce racial disparity in the criminal justice system, in part because of the same racial disparities in sentencing found by the Herald Tribune, but also because of disparities in income and geography. It was an amazing article, said Raymer McGuire, director of criminal justice reform for the ACLU of Florida. The ACLU of Florida will promote a series of measures in the upcoming legislative session designed to reduce prison population, especially among minorities. Among the group's proposals is an expansion of an existing civil citation program for youth that allows officers to divert young offenders into community service instead of the juvenile justice system. It also wants the state to implement a civil citation pro.